Hello and welcome. It's Dr. San. Today I'm going to talk about spontaneous hypoglycemia. Let's talk about the hypoglycemia. What is it? It's also known as low blood sugar. It's really really important. When the blood sugar level falls below the normal, we call it the low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. It causes many symptoms like this may result in variety of symptoms including clumsiness, trouble, talking, confusion, loss of consciousness, feeling of hunger, really really important. So we are talking the hypoglycemia. These symptoms may present as you that it belongs to hypoglycemia. So now we talk about the spontaneous hypoglycemia. So the spontaneous hypoglycemia most commonly occurs at the side effects of the treatment with insulin or sulfonylureas. It is the drug of choice of we used to give for diabetic patients. So it's really really important for us to understand about when we are giving insulin and sulfonylureas. Previously, I talked about the hypoglycemia. Now the investigations are unlikely to be needed unless the glucose concentration below 3 millimole per liter are observed. It's really, really important to understand this value. But many patients are true hypoglycemia demonstrating glucose level below 2.2 millimole per liter. Now, before going to discussion, we need to understand few classifications related to pancreas and gastrointestinal tract so that we classify as like that the hormone excess hormone deficiency hormone resistance and non-functioning tumors it's really really important to understand so we again we classify this category into primary and secondary now in terms into primary hormone excess it belongs to insulinoma gastrinoma carcinoid syndrome glucagonoma vipoma and etc now comes to hormone deficiency it belongs to diabetes mellitus so when we are treating this diabetes mellitus by the insulin and sulfonylureas means anti-diabetic drugs so when we are giving these two drugs inappropriately now that time sometimes that blood glucose level blood sugar level fall down it terms that's why we are talking about today spontaneous hypoglycemia other than that uh, we have the hormone resistance it belongs to insulin resistance syndrome means the type 2 diabetes mellitus and also non-functioning tumors mean the pancreatic carcinoma and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors now when it comes to signs symptoms of hypoglycemia it belongs to anxiety nervousness palpitation tachycardia sweating it's really really important pallor coldness is really important for us to understand the coldness and pallor and the dilated pupils means the mitrasis hunger and also nausea vomiting abdominal discomfort and headaches too it's really really difficult to remember all the same symptoms by this way but we can remember by the easy mnemonics he is tired he for headache is for irritable or sweating t for tachycardia i for irritability r for restlessness e for excessive hunger d for dizziness so we can remember like this way it's easy to remember the hypoglycemic disorder should be diagnosed only if all the three conditions of Whipple's stride are met yes we'll talk about today Whipple's stride it's really really important to understand that what is the Whipple's stride so the Whipple's stride goes to number one patients had symptoms of hypoglycemia it's really important number two low blood glucose or sugar measured at the time of symptoms it's really important to understand and number three symptoms resolved on correction of hypoglycemia so these three symptoms means these three criteria are when we met then we are talking about we are dealing with that we called that this is Whipple's stride now we talk about the differential diagnosis of spontaneous hypoglycemia means that what are the causes means the what are the causes it produce spontaneous hypoglycemia so we used to do insulin and c peptide for measure and to understand that spontaneous hypoglycemia so if the insulin and c peptide goes down means the decrease then we think about 
alcohol, drugs, and critical illness, hypopituitarism, primary adrenocortical failure is really important and non islet cell tumors. So it is also really, really important. And number two, secondly, we can understand by if it is insulin increased and C peptide decreased. So by that way, we can understand exogenous insulin. And then the number three, we can understand by the if it is the insulin increased and C peptide increased, then we can understand insulinoma sulfonylureas other drugs so it's really, really important just we talked about few times before that the insulin and the sulfonylureas so these things when it comes like that way so we can understand by this way that by these two insulin and c peptide measuring that way if it is increased if it is decreased so we can understand by that way nicely that what causes exactly spontaneous hypoglycemia is other than that hypoglycemia could occur in the patient with hepatic failure renal failure adrenal insufficiency and sepsis so these are the causes we can understand about this matter that spontaneous hypoglycemia and you have to or you need to understand about these all the consequences of hypoglycemia so before going to end don't forget about this method to diagnosis of whipple stride and also the insulin and c peptide measurement differential diagnosis of spontaneous hypoglycemia that's all for today i hope you enjoyed and have a great day